Welcome to Chapter 10 of The Kids Connection. I'm Pam. And I'm Jim. I'm going to review a couple of our verses and a clapping game. Yeah, let's start with our verse, the way we start. One, One is, is the, the sun, sun that shines so bright. bright. One, One is, is the, the moon, moon so, so high. high. One, One is, is the day. day. One, One is the night. night. One, One is the, the sheltering sky. sky. Two, Two are, are the, the eyes with, with which, which I see. see. Two, Two are, are the ears that hear. Joy and, and sorrow both, both live in me. So do courage and fear. Shall we try that again? Yeah, let's try it again right. with our friends at home. Ready? Yes. One, One is, is the sun that shines so bright. bright. One, One is the moon so high. One is the day. One is the night. One is the sheltering sky. Two are the eyes with which I see. Two are the ears that hear. Joy and sorrow both live in me. So do courage and fear. Very good. All right. And now do you remember our rice, Japanese rice game called Omochio Suki Masho. Okay, here we go. Omochio suki masho, omochio suki masho, petan ko, petan ko, petan, petan, petan ko. He kono te, he kono te, he kono, he kono, he kono te. Tan, 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 ten, tan, 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 ten, tan, tan, ten, tan, ten, tan, ten, tan. Great. Every time we do that, I wonder if I'm going to make it. Because <laughs> it's a little too tight. Yeah. Okay, so we try it one more time. And this time, you can, if you have a friend, you can do it. Or if you don't, you can choose which part you'd rather do. The mm. my part or Jim's part. Ready? Okay. Omochi o suki masho. Omochi o suki masho. Petan ko. Petan ko. Petan, petan, petan ko. He kono te. He kono te. He kono, he kono, he kono te. Tan, 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 ten, tan. Tan, 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 ten, tan. Tan, ten, tan, ten, tan, ten, tan. Yay, we did it. We did it. We survived. We did. Which brings us to our other verse. Ah, yes. Okay. There lives in me an image of all that I can be. Until I have become it. My heart is never free. Can you try that at home with us? There lives in me an image of all that I can be. Until I have become it, my heart is never free. Very good. So if you remember next, last time, we sang a song about, it was a circle game, and it was about three wandering travelers. And then we told a story about three travelers who were going to a village. And if you remember, in the song, the first time that they sang it, they were in a circle. And these are our friends, if you recall. Pooh, Freddie, Paris, Sue Ellen. Over here we have Vicky. And here we have Eeyore and, and Tigger and Rabbit. And what they did was they were in a circle, and as they came around, they were asking to be let in, and they said no. And then the second time they said yes, and then they all sang together. So we're just going to do the first and third verse of this song. And this is how it went. We are three wandering travelers out in the wind and the rain. We saw your light shining so bright, tapped on your window pane. Saying, let us come in, let us come in, into your house we pray. Let us come in, let us come in, we Please will not turn, turn us away. Please do not turn us away. Right. right. Yeah. And then the third verse after they let them in went like this. We are three wandering travelers out in the wind and the rain. We saw your light shining so bright. Tapped on your window pane, saying, Let us, you may come in, you may come in, into our house we pray. You may come in, you may come in, 
we will not turn you away. So that's how the song went. And then we had a little village, and in the village we had some village people who right now are going to actually be these, these guys. Mm. And then poor Sue Ellen is having a little trouble sitting up. And then these were the wandering travelers. It was Vicky Vicuña, and it was Rabbit, and it was Tigger. And they went to the village, and they said, oh, please, can we have some food we're so tired and hungry and it was raining whoops Wind. there goes vicky and every time the villagers said no you may not and so they went down by a stream and they had a big pot that's the only thing they had and they put a big stone in it and they started set up a fire and uh one of the villagers came by and said what are you making and they said we're making stone soup it's very delicious and the travel or the the villagers said, oh, I'd like to try some. And they said, well, it would be a lot better if we had some carrots. And so he ran and got some carrots. And um, then another villager came along and wondered the same thing. And they said, yes, but it would be much better if we had some spices. So they got some bay leaves. And as more and more villagers came, they added uh, cabbage, and they added beef, and they added um, potatoes. Okay. And now it's really starting to smell good. So finally, they took the stone out, and they all shared the soup together. And we talked about how, how it feels to be left out and be on the ins outside of a group, and how good it feels to be on the inside of the group, and maybe how important it is to imagine how other people are feeling, and when people are on the outside, making an opening to let those people into the group. Here's a book called Chicka Chicka Boom Boom by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archambault, illustrated by Lois Ehlert. A told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. We said D to EFG, I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and Tagalong K, all on their way up the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Look who's coming, LMNOP. And QRS. And TUV. Still more, W and X, Y, Z. The whole alphabet up the, oh no. Chicka chicka boom boom. Skit, scat, scoodle doot, flip flop flea. Everybody running to the coconut tree. Mamas and papas, and uncles and aunts hug their little dears, then dust their pants. Help us up, cried ABC. Next to the pile up, skinned, skinned knee D and stub toe E and patched up F, then comes G all out of breath. H is tangled up with I, J and K are about to cry, L is knotted like a tie. M is looped, N is stooped, O is twisted alley-oop, skid scattle scoodle doo flip-flop flee. Look who's coming, it's black-eyed P. QRS and loose tooth T. Then UVW, wiggle jiggle free, last to come XYZ, and the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But, chicka chicka boom boom, 
Look, there's a full moon. A is out of bed, and this is what he said. Dare, double dare, you can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. Wee, said D to E, F, G. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and tag along K all on their way up the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Look who's coming. L, M, N, O, P. And Q, R, S. And T, U, V. Still more. W. And X, Y, Z. The whole alphabet up the... Oh, no. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Skit, scat, scoodle, doot. Flip, flop, flee. Everybody's running to the coconut tree. Mamas and papas and uncles and aunts hug their little dears, then dust their pants. Help us up, cried ABC. Next from the pile up, skinned, skinned knee D and stub toe E and patched up F. Then comes G all out of breath. H is tangled up with I. J and K are about to cry. L is knotted like a tie. M is looped. N is stooped. O is twisted, alley-oop. Skit, scat, scoodle, doo, flip, flop, flee. Look who's coming. It's black-eyed P. Q, R, S, and loose tooth T. Then, U, V, W. Wiggle, jiggle, free. Last to come, X, Y, Z. And the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But, chicka chicka boom boom, look, there's a full moon. A is out of bed. And this is what he said. Dare, double dare, you can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. So, welcome back. Do you remember how in an earlier episode we showed you about straight lines and curved lines? Well, if we make letters just like in the book, chicka, chicka, boom, boom, we're going to need those straights and curves. Let me show you. If we start with the first letter A, straight, straight, straight. There is A. Now, that is a big A, what's called an uppercase A. Let's show you the little A, the lowercase A. This one's different. Curve, straight. Curves and straights. A, uppercase A, lowercase a. They're both A. 
All right, let's do B. Let's show you B. Straight curve, curve. See, straights and curves. That's the big B. Now the small B. Straight curve. B. That's a B. Let's do C. Get ready for this. Nothing but a curve. Curve. Let's do a small c. Curve again. It really just looks like we took a machine and shrunk <laughs> the small c. It's the same as the big one. All right, one last letter to show you. Let's do D. Straight curve. Let's show you the lowercase d. Curve. Straight. A, B, C, D. Now, let me show you two trickier letters. Let's erase those letters. Let's show you the S. S has two curves. When you get the hang of it, it's fun to make. Two curves. And again, it looks like we just took a shrinking machine and shrunk it down. Okay, and let's show you the U. Let's show you the U. Here we go. Straight, and then it curves all of a sudden and goes back into a straight. And then the small U. It's only about half as big as its parent. Yeah, see, if we took a line, a dotted line, through the middle, you would see the small ones are only half as big as the parent. S, U. Okay, so as we look at our letters, here are our uppercase A, B, C, D. They're big, so they stretch all the way from the top to the bottom. And, and some of them have middle parts too, like A, B. Then the lowercase letters, some of them, like the little a, stay right in that little zone from the middle to the bottom. But some of them, many of them actually, stretch beyond, like the B goes above to the top. See how it has a flagpole that goes all the way up? Same with D and F. And then some of them, like G, swing down below the bottom and go down below. So some of the small letters go up and some of the small letters go down. And you can see we put them all right there. I has a dot above the line. J also has a dot above the line. K, L, P, Q, T, Y. Right, so just to review, some of the small letters stay right in that little zone, like that. And then many of them, though, most of them, go beyond and stretch either all the way to the top, like B, or some of them go well down below the bottom, like G. So, some of them ascend to the top, some of them descend below the bottom. So making the letters takes a lot of practice. And we're going to put up a chart that will show you all the letters. And you can see which ones are which. Some are big, some are small. And also there will be pictures with them. And you can try to guess what is the picture. It'll be a fun little game.
Jim. We got another package. Oh, it's our package. What, is, what do we have this week? We have more paper for making letters. Oh, for practicing. Excellent. Yes. And we have some colored pencils. Oh, wow. They're so small. They are. Wow. And look at this. We have two paper bookmarks. And one has a J on it for Jim. And one has a P on it for Pam. Oh, very neat. OK. Cool. All right, so we can make, oh, bookmarks might be fun to make. And um, we can put our names on them. Great, yeah, Pam and Jim. So wow, the sky is the limit. You can put your name on there and really make it any way you want. Um, I kind of like these. Um, block or bubble letters, however you want to call them. And I think I'll go ahead and finish making Pam. Now you can try bubble letters. If you're new to making letters, they might be a little challenging. Um, if you've made letters before, they might seem a little easier. This is really almost like drawing as much as it is writing and making letters. Aha, uh -huh. okay, Pam, mm -hmm. Pam. Now that I've done that, I could color them in any way I want. I could put a border around my bookmark, and I think I'll do that just for fun. I'll make a little border all the way around. And bookmarks are fantastic for marking your place in a book. So if you're reading a good book and you stop on page five, you can put your bookmark right in there and it saves your place so you know where you left off last time. Um, yeah, so you get an idea how I'm making a border. And maybe I would like to put a little dot on the border so I could go all the way around making dots. That might be fun. If I want, I could put some blue in the letters, like make some stripes or something different. And maybe I'll color in the rest of it. So yeah, you can be creative and make your letters however you want. If you're into dogs, you could draw your dog on your bookmark. Uh, the idea really is to have fun. There really aren't many rules. See, I colored in the P, the big P, the capital P. Right? So again, you see how we have capital letters and we have small letters. OK, there's one possibility. And I'm not done. If this were my bookmark, I would want to finish it and complete the border. Um, but that'll take a little time. Let me try the other bookmark and just see if there's something else we can try. So I'll make my name Jim. Mm, I think I need the brown here. Yeah. So the question is, have you learned how to spell your name yet? Do you know the letters in your name? My first name, Jim, is pretty short. Or like Pam, that's short too, only three letters. I had trouble learning my last name because that has 11 letters. <laughs> so that, that took me a little longer to learn how to make that. Um, yeah, but you have to start somewhere. All right. So. Jim, J, capital J, I am. And maybe, hmm, this is a little tricky. Sometimes you can almost make the letters seem three dimensional. Now, this really takes a little practice, but I've learned a trick about how to extend the letters and make them, but that. That maybe is a little more advanced. You don't have to try that. But it just shows that whatever you want to try, you know, this is your bookmark. You can do whatever you want. Maybe for the border on this one, I'll put a, uh, how about a zigzag? 
shape is fun to do. Uh, yeah, talk about straight and curved. Most of the things you will see or draw, maybe everything, I don't know, start looking. Maybe everything is straight or curved. So on the zigzag, it's all straight, straight lines. Now, here's the thing about straight lines. Not everything is straight up, and not everything is straight across. Some things are like this. That's called diagonal. So it is a straight line, but it's not straight up, and it's not straight across. It's actually like on a slant, that way or this way. Yeah, diagonal. So your bookmark, you really can make it anything you want. And if you don't have a good book that you like, you could start looking for one. People used to go to these things called libraries. They still exist. They may not always be open right now with everything going on, but maybe there's a book at home or the library or school. When you get back to school, whenever that is, uh, there's lots of books in schools. Look for a book on a subject you like that interests you. That's a good way to go. So there's a different way to make a border. And really, the sky's the limit with your bookmark. Earlier in this chapter, we looked at each different letter. And on that letter was a picture. And we told you to guess what the picture was for that particular letter. And in fact, each letter has many different words that uses that letter. But we are going to tell you that we have particular objects that have this as the first letter in the name. And so for each one of these objects that I'm going to show to you now, you can guess, and then I'm going to tell you what is that picture that Jim did such a great job of drawing for us. Also, in your package, you got some paper. And we can use that paper to practice making these letters. So the first object is apple and begins with the letter A. The second word or letter is B for baby. The third letter is C for cat. D stands for the word door. E stands for the word eagle. F is the first letter in the word fire. G is the first letter in the word gift. And we all love gifts. H is the first letter for the word horse. I is a letter that stands by itself. And what does I stand for? I is me. I am Pam. J stands for the word jump. K stands for the word kite. L is the first letter in the word lion. M is the first word in the letter, or is the first letter in the word mountain. N is the first letter in the word night. O is the first letter for the word Owl. P is the first letter for the word prince. Did you guess prince? Well, right after P, we had a Q. And what does Q stand for? Q is the first letter in the word queen. R is the first letter in the word red. S is the first letter in the word snake. T is the first letter in the word tree. U is a sort of a long word. It's the first letter in the word umbrella, which we carry when it rains. V is the first letter in the word valiant. Now that's a pretty hard word. Valiant is 
there's a picture here of a knight. And I probably wouldn't expect you to know this word, so this is a fancy word that you can learn and use. To be valiant means to be brave and to have courage. And knights are known for having courage. So V for the word valiant. W is the first letter for the word wave, like when you go to the beach, you, you jump in the waves. X is actually the second letter in the word ax. There's not a lot of words that start with the letter X. There's one long one that's called a, an xylophone, which is a little instrument that you play. But for this one, we did ax. Y is the first letter in the word yolk. A yolk is what's in the middle of an egg that you eat for breakfast. You ever hear of that, an egg yolk? And the last letter is Z. And Z is the first letter in the word zebra. So that was a lot of fun. And you can practice drawing different things that start with different letters. You can practice writing the letters. And if you know how to do it, you can even practice writing the words. And remember what Jim said, once you know how to make a curve and a line, all of the letters are made from curves and lines. So I hope you have a lot of fun with that. Today was a little bit different because we focused so much time learning about the alphabet. But first we did our verses about one is the sun that shines so bright and two are the eyes that see. And we also practiced again our more complicated little game that we played called Omo Chiyo Suki Masho. That's a fun one. And we did There Lives in Me an image about how doing our best. Then we sang our song about we are three wandering travelers and we reminded ourselves of the story that we told last time about stone soup and how when everybody comes together and works together it's more fun and sometimes it's a little more interesting even. And then we had a new story and we looked at all the alphabet and we looked at all the letters. And in the letters it was a sort of like a poem. A told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. So we did the story in the book and then we acted it out with our little magnetic letters that stuck to the board and Jim drew us, drew us a great palm tree and all the letters climbed up the tree. That was fun. And if you have any of those letters at home, they're a lot of fun to play with. You can make words with them. And then we, um, we, made, we got a package and we made bookmarks with our names on it. And so that was a lot of fun too. And Jim talked about how you can use a bookmark when you're reading a book to save your place in the, in the bookmark. And then we went back and after people had tried to guess what the objects were on the letter pictures, we went back and we reviewed them all with you. So now you know, and you know a new word that's called valiant. And so next time we're gonna have new things planned and we're gonna have a lot of fun. We'll see you then. Thank you.